blessed Mario Brothers. Not again. Well, this is good news. Wait. No. Fools! You let your guards down! Even with all your fancy attacks, you can't beat me! Farewell, you two losers! It's time for you to take a nice relaxing break. Eat my belly! Oh no. Are you still conscious? Ugh, you're a persistent pair. I shall dispose of you quickly, and then eat you for lunch. We're still alive, that was not the end of that. A really cool way to bring back the uh, time bombs from the Koopaling fights. But this is Kakaletta's spirit, the one true villain of everything, because it's no real big deal if we attack Bowser's body if her spirit remains intact. So as you can see, they drop you in here with one health each, and she will immediately attack. And she can use moves that will kill you if she hits you. So immediately you want to use some max hammers. She will lunge her claws at you, and she has a ton of moves at her disposal. Her left hand is a firebrand hand, her right hand is a thunderbrand hand, and are uh, weak to the opposite elements and absorb their respective elements, if that makes any sense. So, if you use lightning on the left arm, actually I'm going to use Thunder Brothers, we will do massive damage to it. And even though that didn't do much damage at all, uh, that preemptive hammer hit was enough to knock it down so that we could destroy that arm. Uh, Kakaletta's arms only have like 100 HP, and if you go right for her head, on the other hand, she will freak out and attack you with her hand, so she does not want you to attack her with her hand. However, she will have her Thunderbrand hand, and I like this actually little bit of detail that she uses lightning and thunder, and I think it's meant to suggest that she has mastered the Thunder Hand and Firebrand abilities, which I think is a cool detail for uh, world building here. And it makes sense, and especially that she's much more powerful with it than Mario and Luigi are. And she can heal her parts, by the way, with her skull. So that is something you want to worry That is something you want to worry about. I suddenly lost my ability to breathe through my nose. Oh my god, I don't want to be a mouth breather. But that is not what is important right now. What is important right now is that we are in the final battle of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. I'm Mr. Devious, or just Deep, if I hadn't said that already. Uh, I probably haven't if I'm splitting the video as I wanted to. And this is Cacletta. We were inhaled by Bowletta. And you already know this because you probably already came from the episode before this. If not, hi, welcome to the final episode of Mario Luigi Superstar Saga. The absolute last episode. We got rid of her arms now though, which means that we have to aim for her head and get rid of that. However, I can also get the timing wrong on that and make a complete fool of myself. But that's okay. I just try my best, and well, actually, honestly, that might not be okay, because the fact of the matter is, Cacoletta's spirit is the most deadly enemy in the game, but we got rid of her body, and revealed her heart, and she regenerated her body. We're doomed. So this is one of her more common moves, where she just kind of swings her arms around, and you have to watch her eyes to get an idea of how she'll swing them. If they're low, you jump over them, if they're high, you don't jump, or you'll get hit. It's funny because all final bosses in the Mario and Luigi games have some variation of an attack you have to jump over. And she'll hit us with that, and that'll hurt. Now what I was wanting to say about the Thunder uh, Hand a little earlier is that if it hits you, it'll actually do a defense down, unless that's the fire attack that does that. Now, when you expose her heart, you don't want to aim for her other parts. You just want to aim for the heart. Her heart will heal the other parts. You can't steal anything from it, but Swing Brothers is just a cool move. If you attack the other parts, it's a move point. She'll heal them. If you destroy another part, she'll just regenerate it immediately with her heart. You want to take advantage of the time in which the heart is exposed. And with that, you want to lay into it with the best moves that you have. Now, the fact of the matter is, you could use your peppers here for an extra defense or attack boost, and that's all well and good, but you have to remember that those change your 
gravity. Also, that can stun, and that is a really bad way to be right now. Do we have a refreshing herb? We're gonna use a refreshing herb on Luigi so he doesn't get his butt kicked. This move is actually very easy, where she just lunges her claws at you. She'll just flick you up in the air if she hits you. However, that meant that we did lose an opportunity to attack the heart. But that means we have to do what we can to um, expose it again. And we hit her head for some reason. I don't know why, because I'm a fool. This move is actually kind of dangerous if you're not ready for it. It can do a ton of damage, and if it knocks you over, it can be hard to get back into the rhythm of jumping over it. And this is actually one of the moves she can start out with if when you start this battle. So, and if at the start of this battle, when she always gets a turn, at least I think she does, well, if she hits you, that's it. You gotta go back and do the first stage of the fight, which is uh, the bow, not Bowletta, but yeah, Bowletta. If you saved before it anyway. I haven't gamed over yet, and I say that because I could game over here. But if you do game over, it does give you the option to start back at your last save point or back in Bean Bean Castle Town with the progress you already made, which is interesting. But, you know, you have to start all the way back in Bean Bean Castle Town, but that is a good way to cheat for grinding, I guess, or for items, like to get golden mushrooms and things. Here I am giving strategies at the end of the game. Um, this should have the range to hit her. This move does hit aerial enemies, so that's great. She's already alerted because we hit her once. And now I finally did that move right and we knocked her head off. And her body is stunned. I did not know that I could do that. That That is amazing. Uh, if, if, in case you forget which uh, element, which arm is weak to, a good way to remember is that the right arms, uh, Mario is always targeted by right eyes and right arms, so he should attack the right arms in turn and then Luigi should always attack the left one in turn. Now that she only has one hand and she looks really goofy, um, we just, just, you know, avoid this attack. This is actually one of her most dangerous attacks. I think this might be the one that knocks your defense down, and if it knocks your defense down, it starts doing 20 to 30 damage per hit, and it can kill you really quickly, and that is just, that is no good. You do not want that. Nobody wants that. Especially not me. There we go. That is how we do that move and expose her heart so that we can hit it with, we can just lay into it with one of our best moves in the game. I have always been fond of the hammer moves. I think that they are the best moves in the game uh, by far. They last the longest. They have the most effectiveness. And they do tons of damage. But by the time you get to about three per hit, it's not really worth hitting it again. And she will heal her body. Uh, as she takes damage, she will develop more moves. She will summon the ghost of Fawful or just an apparition of him. But I think before Fawful came back, it, it does lend itself to the theory that she could revive his ghost from the grave, also with its headgear. But that's a really cool uh, little move that she has there and just smacking Fawful again, just for good measure. Although that does kind of, it, it's interesting the relationship between him, uh, Cacletta and Fawful, how he seems so absolutely loyal. And then at the end of the game, he's like, wait a minute, I'm responsible for basically everything here. None of this would have been possible if not for me, and it seems like he was having doubts of his uh, subordination. So maybe I'm just reading too deep into it, but it does make for interesting times in the next game. Not in the next game, but, well, Fawful does appear in the next game in a cameo in the sewers, but it's kind of minor. It's not until the third game where he really gets his break, but I don't think his role really works there, and I'll probably talk about that in a bit, but for now, we are worried about Cacletta. And what a fantastic cac villain Cacletta is. I, I really mean this. I think that she is one of the better Mario, uh, one of the better Mario series villains. Uh, usually the Mario RPG villains are. They have the closest thing assumed to death that Mario villains have. And I know that's a stretch because they still fall into the basic, like, evil for the sake of evil. I just want to rule the world, of course. But with Cacletta... I feel that she was one of the first Mario villains that ever really showed a ton of competence. She had a lot of forethought and planning. Like when we fought her as Bowletta, she had the time bomb set up, and that basically did a ton of damage to us, and we don't really need to use that. Um, but she was one of the first villains to really show that kind of competence and that kind of forethought and planning. And the only reason that we really won is because our side, the Bean Bean Kingdom, Peasley and Queen Bean and all of them, 
they were equally competent in their plans. Well, maybe not Peasley, but they had equal uh, countermeasures and plans for Cacoletta, and that's the only reason that we won, and we did win. We saved Princess Peach, we got the Beanstar back, we destroyed Cacoletta's original body, and she kept fighting back. That's what I love about Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, is that the game has a ton of give and take. It, will basi it basically lets you feel like you get a sense of progress, whereas in a whole bunch of RPGs, and the third game in particular, where I feel that the third game falls flat, or at least falls weakly, is that Fawful is always, always, always one step ahead of you, and that doesn't really work in my mind. Granted, you're playing as Bowser in that game, and Bowser's kind of a buffoon, but that's not the point. The point is, this game has a ton of give and take, and I love it for that. I think that it really shows a really nice way of doing an RPG, where it doesn't always have to be. Always one step behind the villain, always behind them and weaker up until the 11th hour, where you somehow manage to overpower them. Where, you know, you can get the better of Cacoletta sometimes and Fawful. You can make fools of them just as much as they make fools of you, and they will do that. They'll make fools of you too. And I appreciate it for that. It, I was shocked when you beat Cacoletta at the, at the midpoint of the game, when you seemingly defeated her. And she also has a new move here, where she shoots lasers out of her eyes. Uh, the right eye will target Luigi, uh, Mario, left eye Luigi. She will flash her eyes, at which point you want to jump or not jump, depending on the orientation of her eyes. Which is a really cool move, by the way. But, I digress. She does have a ton of moves, as you can see. She'll also start moving her claws around, for some reason. She has one more move we haven't seen yet, and I hope we do see it. Uh, but I don't think we've quite about beat her yet, but we are doing really well, and I don't want to jinx myself. I've gotten two game overs so far on my practice file, and I don't want to jinx it. And she will continue to heal herself. Her heart has somewhere in the range of like 1500 HP, and that's ridiculous because all the bosses in this game usually never go above 500. Uh, maybe there was Chuck Lissa. I think she had like 700 or something. Point is, lots of health on this boss. And this is also will denote the format of all the Mario and Luigi bosses to follow, where you have to destroy parts to expose a weaker point that you have to effectively destroy. In this case, uh, Cacoletta's heart. I don't know why I used a wimpy-ass attack on that heart. Oh no, I swore, but I just... Sometimes in RPGs, I'll just default to the simplest option. If you fail to hit Fawful, he'll keep trying to shoot you until you do. Also, I have i don't know if I commented on it, but Fawful just has an amazing voice clip, and I love it. I think it's great. But, anyway... Brother ways are... Brother moves are the way to end this battle, are the way to... or how you're gonna win. I think this fight may as well be uh, impossible, unless you're overleveled without Brothers moves, or at least extremely tedious. And this is the way to end your adventure, as the Mario Brothers working together, rather than just one of them getting in a cheap final hit. I would have been sad if Luigi actually got the killing hit there, but I don't know how close she is to uh, death because of how much health she has, and I think she might be hiding her heart again. Yes, she will be. And that's okay that this is a long fight, because this is the final battle, and therefore it is appropriate that... Oh boy. Boy, how I messed up that move. Well, <laughs> that was embarrassing. So it does uh, lend itself to let's just show off all the different moves we've learned over the course of the adventure. And if we actually hit a claw with this move, you knock her all the way up in the air and it looks goofy as hell. It's kind of stupid. And she'll move her claws about. When she does that, it's just easier to use both brothers' uh, hammers. There's no real reason not to. But anyway, we're gonna keep using all of our brother's moves. I think we've used every move with every variation to differentiating success. And we didn't jump in time, so she will hit us with her lasers. She does do a ton of damage for when she does you uh, does hit you. Thankfully, I've practiced this fight twice. Haven't beat it yet on my practice file, so that's uh, bad news. I've actually been doing all right so far. Whereas, I game over it on both of those. So that kind of speaks to what we're trying to avoid. Uh, did I do everything? I guess so. Well, except for... Well, we did that, we just didn't do the variation of that move. And she will keep summoning Fawful from the grave, from where he belongs. It's kind of an interesting thought that Fawful may have just been, may have uh, originally been planned to die. I mean, I don't know if this game was set up to have uh, a sequel. Like, I'm guessing, I mean, no games really are just 
unless they're already part of an established franchise, or certain games these days that are made with the intention to be a saga. I don't have any off the top of my head, but I know that there are games that are made with the explicit purpose of being sequel bait, of having sequels, and I just don't know how to feel about that. Whereas Mario & Luigi, uh, Superstar Saga, they probably made it. This is a bad move, and I'm gonna let that fire hit Luigi, and he can just run into the heart and undo the damage that I healed. So the heart, I think, actually heals off of both elements, so that's news. That's something you want to avoid. So don't use elements on the heart. And I guess that also plays into the lore. If she's a master of Firebrand and Thunderhand, that she's basically immune to magic, or a fire and thunder magic, especially from novices such as these two, except in the arms that she concentrates one of each element. And I do also appreciate the fact that they gave Mario and Luigi different elements, whereas in the sequels, they both just have fire. And they don't really have the hand moves to begin with. They kind of downgrade their individual, their solo moves. And I will just come out and say I love the sequels, but they're nowhere near as good as this one is, in my personal opinion. But I love them for what they are, but this one has a special place in my heart. And I think that we're actually getting close to the end of this fight. Yes, this is the last move in her arsenal that she will use when she is getting close. You'll see these orbs uh, appear randomly around the battlefield, and when they, you see a pink one or a green one, that means they're going to appear in front of one of the brothers and attack them. I am going to use a nut. I do not want to risk getting hit here. I'm going to use a max nut because it's the end of the game, even though ultra nuts would have done fine. I'm going to heal them, and I'm just going to take care of that. Whereas, what was I, what, what line of thinking was I on? This is a bad time to lose my line of thinking. Yeah, I like the little detail that she is the master of the elements, and she's only weak to them in the part of her, in the, her, in the parts where she's concentrated the other element. And in the sequels, I don't like that they took away that in, that in, differentiation between Mario and Luigi, where they're just kind of samey aside from their uh, preferred stats. But I think I've been going on for too long. I think it's time to start bringing this battle to a close. We have been doing this fight for quite some time now. And that means it will be time to finish off uh, Cacletta. Only focus on the orbs that appear in front of them. Try not to worry too much about them. And we are going to try and finish off this battle with one of the coolest moves in the game. We are going to do it with a good old-fashioned Swing Brothers. I hope I get this right. And can we? Will that do it? No! Now I feel silly and ridiculous. I, like I said, she has a ton of health. It's really kind of uh, weird, strange. Most bosses in Mario & Luigi games don't have a ton of health, except for the final bosses, which have an exorbitant amount of health. Like, this battle's been going on for how long now? But I hope you've been sticking around for it. If not, I'm sorry, but... Well, this is kind of, I think, the normal for most, most people playing this game. And I jumped in the wrong order there. In that, they get to this fight, and they hit her as hard as they can, but... It's not quite the amount of damage that they need to finish the fight. It's just... You expect the battle to end sooner than it does, because she has like 1500 HP, which is effectively triple what most enemies have, and that's her core. And you have to expose that core multiple times, and it's not that it has a ton of defense, but you do have to expose it every time, multiple times, in order to make, you know, an effective difference. We also... If I were to give advice on which arm to, des to destroy, I would say actually destroy that other arm, this one first, because it's, well, maybe the other, yeah, 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 destroy this one first. This is the move with the fire attack, and you want to destroy that. You just, that is one of her deadliest moves. You don't want, you want to take that away from her as quickly as you can, unless the heart is out, in which case you're just better off leaving it out. Does that take care of it, though? Yes, it does. We destroyed a part on a counterattack. I appreciate that and think it's cool. We will jump up in the air. And that will knock out her head. And will that expose her heart again? Yes. If I don't defeat her on this turn, I will be sad. However, I will do my best to defeat her on this turn. Luigi will get lasered. And this time, it'll try not to be Mario. Keep him in the air. This is actually a really cool move. I like the time uh, gimmick of that move. Of course, like most bosses towards the end game, the closer she gets to defeat, the more turns she takes, the more you have to dodge and avoid her moves, the less moves you get. 
so you know that you're getting close to the end because she's getting desperate. She's pulling out all the stops. This is all she has left, and you just have to bring it home. You can't. This is just the worst time to die, and all Mario and Luigi bosses do this. All, all their final bosses do this. Was that enough? It was enough for them. So now that it is Mario's turn, who shall we bring it home with? We shall. I think I know what I'm going to do here. We are going to use a red pepper on Mario. I hope I don't regret this, because this could also be his death. Look at that amount of damage. That's just great. Like, even between the brothers' turns. Now with Mario's attack upped, we are going to aim. Knockback brothers at her. We're going to do tons of damage. 196, and that is enough to finish her off. What? Huh? Hey! What's happening to me? It can't be! Impossible! I... No! How could I? And to this filthy little pair... How could I lose? I don't really claim the Mario and Luigi games to be high art. The Mario RPG games in particular, they're not they don't strive to be something big with their stories and their RPG storytelling. They they keep it fairly simplistic, but that is still kind of a a little it, when I was 12, that was a bit of a chilling end. Bowser is asleep. We can hit him with a hammer. It won't do anything. He's just going to stay there. But that's the end of Cacletta. But we're still in control, so Cheers to the Superstar Siblings! I have just finished rigging this castle with an explosive device. We must escape before it blows up and falls from the sky. Make haste! I will meet you at the castle entrance. Peasley! Why did you activate the timer? Why would you do that? If you try to go and take the down... Actually, I'm going to show that off right now. Um, <laughs> why would you do that? If you try to leave this way, if you try to take the long way out... The bridge has fallen, and you are you have you are stuck, having to take the path that he took out. Why would he do that? Still, that also speaks to what I was saying earlier about your side of the team doing something as well. Prince Peasley hasn't been just spending this time faffing off. He's been he's been rigging the place with explosives. He's been hard at work. He hasn't just been waiting around for you to solve the problem, even though you've had to save his butt a couple times. Anyway, I've done this section quite a few times, so I know what I'm doing here. Originally, you just kind of wander around the staircase being like, Ah, what do I do? You want to drop down here in front of this button and put Mario on top and hit this button. This, I guess, is your very, very final review in uh, Mario and the... This is your final platforming review, and it's kind of unnecessary. Like, if this timer runs out, the one that I'm standing over right now, you will get a game over and have to fight Bowletta again. But that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but... Even after all of my dinking around, we're already back at the entrance. That didn't even take a minute and a half. They give you three minutes. The front door has been boarded up. This place is now desolate. And... That's everything. They take away your save block also, for obvious reasons. And with that, we are just gonna talk to Ridley... I mean, Blabonadon. Uh, hurry! We've got to get out of this place! Now! Whoa! Where am I? What have I been doing? Take care, everyone. Please come visit us in the Mushroom Kingdom someday. Princess Peach, you have a fine group of friends. I am quite envious. 
Toadsworth. Lady Lima. Oh. Hey. Uh, Princess Peach, Mario Bros. I must thank you all. Accept this gift from me to mark our parting. <laughs> that is a big gift. We get some better detailed sprites of them having fun. And what was our gift? It's a big gift. Aww. Great gift, Peasley. And with that, with that actually kind of abrupt ending, that's the end of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Welcome to the credit sequence. Uh, I have been Mr. Devious, or just Deeb, and that's the end of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Thank you for watching, uh, maybe just this episode, or the entire LP, if you've been following along, especially thanks to you. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this LP, and I. but towards the end I do feel that it is time for the LP to be done. And we will be flying over the landscape now with Bowser tailing behind us in our little airplane that was in Super Mario Sunshine. And we will be watching the end, getting our credits, and Blavonidon will be following us, and we will get to see everybody say goodbye, flying over Teehee Valley and seeing Prince Peasley. And the people from uh, Little Fungi Town just standing around in the desert for some reason. And with that, though, we will be crossing the borders, or at least the ocean. And I guess we're not properly out of there yet. We we get to see the entire cast, sort of, in what was effectively sort of a tradition in Mario RPG games was to have a kind of parade of enemy or parade of cast of characters and. That's always been one detail I've really liked about the Mario RPGs, is they've usually done good credit sequences, although this kind of stopped with Thousand Year Door, which eh, I was only okay with. But anyway, we're talking about Mario and Luigi. That's the end of the game. It, it actually feels a little abrupt coming back and playing it after all these years. You beat Cacletta, you escape the castle, and then little final cutscene and credit sequence, but <laughs> we come back to Bowser's castle proper. See, he has more than one castle, and, he, and the... <laughs> And we send Bowser home, much to the shock of his minions. Bowser really gets it rough in this game, and it's kind of a theme of the Mario & Luigi series, up until which kind of culminates in the third game, where he finally gets his bit, where he gets, he, he gets what he deserves. And I do love the third game and the second game, but I feel that the Superstar Saga was the strongest of the three, for its brother's moves, for its writing and storytelling, just what it did what it did with its two brothers and Mario and Luigi is very close to my heart. Hey look there's Gino and I just think this is a great game and you should really play it for yourself if you haven't. Uh, it's definitely worth if you can pick up a Game Boy Advance title somewhere I'm sure you can find a copy. It's great. It's definitely worth it. So we go home and that is the end. Hope to see somebody in the next one.